You must be here for the Nightmare on Elm Street 2 review. Welcome back to the Ecto Violence channel. We're going to be talking about A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. And specifically, we're going to be talking about this VHS copy right here. These copies from Video Treasures were done in LP mode, which if you didn't know is lower quality. This VHS has been through hell. I saw part two for the first time when I was 16. I was working at a movie theater, so I had money of my own, and I bought the DVD box set of A Nightmare on Elm Street. It's the one that goes along with these, you know, that makes up the picture of Freddy on the side. And I loved it immediately. It's slowly grown to become my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Let's go ahead and pop this tape in, shall we? Get the beautiful Video Treasures logo. Please adjust tracking because, you know, this movie's gonna look like shit. And we know it. Not because the movie looks like shit by itself, but because we duplicated it in LP mode. You get this classic opening on the bus, right? I'm not crazy for all the school stuff now that I'm like well beyond that, but when you're growing up, it's just, it makes it so much more relatable when you're watching this stuff. Also, I wanna give a quick shout out to Mark Patton. He does a great job in this role as Jesse. I love him, he's an icon and thank you for your service. Anyway, he does a great job at playing this like almost creepy outcast kid at first when you first see him and you slowly get to know him and you're like, oh man, it just sucks that this guy has to go through this shit. And if you're watching this by now, you probably know all about the stuff about how this is the gayest horror movie of all time. That's part of why I love it. And you want to sleep with me. It's upsetting how things went for Mark Patton at first, but I'm glad that he's embraced it. He posts and interacts with fans all the time on Instagram. Anyway, I think that all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies have a lot of be beautiful sequences because, you know, they're nightmares, so they're dream sequences. So there's a lot of interesting lighting. And, and I love this cut to the tomato slice. And then you hear Jesse screaming upstairs. And he's great at the screaming, too. Also, I really want some of this cereal. Fu Man chews. Where was this all my life? And I love the creepy finger surprise. I think the family may be a little boring. The dad is slightly interesting. But they do a lot of the same things, like the bars on the windows that the first movie did, the falling asleep in school, and then what I can only describe as mm, one of the greatest cinematic scenes in history. Uh, Jesse is told to clean his room before he can go over to hang out. Great scene, no notes. So she's helping him unpack, and uh, they find Nancy's journal in there, which gives us some more context and obviously helps with the spreading of the fear thing. I love that he has the nightmare and he goes into the basement, and he finds the glove, and Freddy's like, Kill for me. Kill for me. I love that shit. Or when he wakes up to scratching, and it's the glove in his drawer. This next scene I like to call the birder scene. Um, bird murder. Because one bird murders another bird, and then flies around the room trying to whoop their asses and then catches fire and explodes. I love animals, so scenes like this normally aren't for me, but like, this one's so silly and ridiculous, it just works. It's not particularly scary, but Jesse's up at night and he's just like, I guess I'm gonna go to the, this uh, this BDSM club and get a drink. And you're like, is he having, is this a nightmare or what? It's kind of confusing, you know? Because Freddy's coming into real life in this movie. And that's a big complaint people have is that it doesn't follow the rules, you know, of the franchise. Well, this was the second movie, so there weren't, there were pretty limited established rules. And they're always at least changing and evolving a little bit, so he finds his gym teacher at this club. Or should I say his gym teacher finds him. Let me say Marshall Bell does a great job in this role too, perfectly creepy and weird. And then he gets covered in balls. It's funny that his night ended the same way it would have, even if he hadn't run into Jesse. So Jesse's in the shower and the coach gets dragged in there and murdered by Jesse, but possessed by Freddy. It's fascinating stuff. So she ends up taking him over to the boiler room, essentially in real life, which I think, is this the only time that we've seen it? I can't recall, I'd have to go back and watch them all again, but this is the most prominent one to me. And all that ends up doing is spooking Jesse more. And then we get the legendary pool party scene. Jesse is just not feeling it. So Kim Myers pops in there and they start making out and they're going for it. I love the little Freddy tongue that comes out that's super creepy and weird. 
the gay stuff really shines through and stuff like this. I'm here for it. So he gets freaked out and he goes to Grady and is like, all right, listen, I, I killed the coach. So uh, you're going to need to help me. And Grady's eventually like, yeah, sure. Then we get Freddy showing up at the party. And I'm sorry, this is amazing. I love this whole sequence. Some people, I, I think they really don't like it, but I know even people who this isn't their favorite Nightmare on Elm Street, they still think that this is one of the better looking Freddy Krueger designs. He's terrifying in this. He's just slicing and dicing these teenagers. You are all my children now. There aren't many scenes like this where Freddy is even around more than one person. In, in Dream Warriors, we kind of get that because there's a little group around it, but usually he tries to single people out. Um, I really like how he bites her leg. It's just so weird and deranged. Freddy, man. Fucking weird. Another one of my favorite shots is Freddy leaving that pool party and just disappearing into flames through the bush. And the ending here basically where love conquers all. And then we get the ending on a bus yet again. Lots of horror movies like to do that. They like to wrap it up, but then like uh, they'll add like a 30 second bit where it's like, just kidding, everybody's dead. For you. Anyway, if you like this video, please like and be kind, subscribe. Thanks for watching.